Shalom, my YouTube family. We will begin continuing on with part three of the Canaanite connection. I will be breaking down further who are the Canaanites. Now, if you are just now tuning in for the first time, I invite you to tune in to part one and two as well. And if you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to ask. I read and respond to everyone's comments. Now, let's begin. As many say, to find Israel, we have to see who fits the curses of Deuteronomy 28. So today we are going to utilize the same logic to identify who the Canaanites are by evaluating their customs and religious beliefs. And then we will see what group presently fits this description. So according to the Bible, Baal was the god of the Canaanites. So let's see how they are still worshiping Baal to this very day. The name of Baal Bek is coming from Baal. Baal was the god of the rain, the god of the thunder, and we had different attributes to the god Baal. We have Baal Hadad, means Baal of the rain, Baal Shamash, the sun, Baal Sapon, the mountain Sapon. Baal Hermon, the mountain Hermon. And in the Holy Bible, we talk about Baal Zubul, which means devil, and people who worshipped the god Baal were against the people who believed in one god, the Hebrew. So here we can say that the Semitic people of this area, they decided to build it. In the past, in the past we talked about the historical part of Baal back, but now we will talk about the ritual. What did these people inside this temple? So we are concentrating the history of Baalbek during the Roman time because it was the largest Roman temple in all the Roman Empire. So this is a Jupiter temple. The temple is divided in different parts. We have the Propylaea, the hexagonal courtyard, the great courtyard, and the temple itself. In front of the Propylaea, we have semicircular benches. So it was here in this area. People will wait when the priest and the procession are ready. They will start the ceremony by the propylaea. As the name said, the entrance before the doors. And if you look to the main entrance, you can see that you have two towers. We have 12 granite columns and you have a staircase partially restored to give an idea that the, uh, that the complex or the temple was the fortress before the restoration. So we will go up and we will start the visit from the propylaea. You can see that we have an altar, we have a tower behind, we have two columns and we have two basins. The priest will go directly to the basin, he will purify the animal and after the purification he will go up to the altar where is the people taking picture there. And of course uh, when he kills the animal with a sacred knife, people will start to go up the tower and down. They will participate in the sacrifice. It looks like each person is offering a sacrifice aside. The priest here is not God. He is not replacing God. He is a mortal who is putting order to the ritual. This is a typically Roman sacrifice. But if you look to the plan, you can see that you have two columns. The first one, uh, it's pink. It has a pink color, represents uh, the fire. And the second one, gray color, represents the wind. And these columns remind us Solomon Temple, uh, built by the Canaanite people, or Phoenicians, or uh, 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 Canaanites, or Semitic people. And we can say that in the ancient time, we had the gods. The gods created the semi-gods, and the semi-gods created the giants. The giants hold Mount Lebanus, and they fix it here. They hold anti Libanus and they put it in front. So the first man who sailed was called Ifus. He discovered a small island. To honor the gods who learned him how he can make fire, he puts a column representing the fire, which has a pink color. And another column represents wind because he needs wind to sail. So this is Boaz and Yakin in the in Solomon Temple. This is the balance of the universe. So for the locals of Baalbek, when they go inside this temple, they are looking to Baal, but for the Romans, they are looking to Jupiter, which means that Baal and Jupiter, same God, 
So our God is your God. So there is no difference between us. In that way, Rome will fix her authority in this area. And of course, they will leave. To do this, we first have to find his temples, and two of his many temples were called Baalbek and Petra. The Temple of Baalbek was located in present-day Lebanon, which is located in the Levant. Now, the Levant is part of the Fertile Crescent and was home to some of the ancient Mediterranean trade centers, such as Ugarit, Tyre, and Sidon, which are Canaanite civilizations that the Bible speaks of that lives on to this very day. Baalbek is the homeland of the Phoenician civilization. Some colonies like Carthage became important cities in the ancient world. One of the main products they traded was a beautiful purple dye. The Phoenicians even got their name from a Greek word that means purple red. Where did the dye come from? Legend says that Melquart, the god of the city of Tyre, was walking on a beach with his girlfriend when his dog started to eat a murex snail. The dog's mouth and teeth turned purple red and the girlfriend demanded a robe of that color. Melquart gathered some snails and had his people make the first purple robe. Most writing systems in Phoenician times were based on pictures. Picture writing was slow and the Phoenicians needed a fast way to keep track of things they bought and sold, so they developed an alphabet. They wrote on wax tablets at first, then on Egyptian papyrus. The Phoenicians shared their writing system with everyone they met, which is why they are called the carriers of civilization. The Greeks and Romans adopted the Phoenician alphabet, but changed it a little. Over time, the alphabet changed more and became the one we use today. Did you know that the Phoenicians were probably the first people to use the North Star for navigation or that they raised elephants on farms? And this is only the beginning. There are many more interesting things to learn about the Phoenician civilization. Or for those of you who don't know, that the Phoenician name is just a nickname for many of the Canaanites that meant purple people. So in other words, the Levant was home to the Canaanites. Now the infamous temple called Baalbek or Jupiter, which is the Roman god equivalent, is home to the Baalbek International Festival, which is a cultural event located in Lebanon. Since it originated in 1922, but probably dates further back, people from all around the world have gone to the city of Baalbek in the Becca Valley of Lebanon to attend this annual festival. There was actually a festival that took place last year in 2020. If you look closely, you can see the image of Baal on the back screen. Now take a good look at the crowd. Does any of them appear to be of African descent? Does any of them have nose rings and plates in their lips? No, they don't. No matter how much people try to make you think the Canaanites were these primitive people, they were the complete opposite. These people represented high status. Why else would the Israelites want to replace their God, the Most High, with the Canaanite God, Baal? The May Queen uh, goddess figure arises from behind the National Monument, this gorgeous monument we have in Edinburgh uh, with giant pillars. Um, she awakens um, from a slumber that she's been in right the way through winter um, and decides actually it's time. It's time for summer to start. Um. See, in Deuteronomy 16, 22, 
It was written that the Most High said, Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of thy Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hated. So Deuteronomy 16, 21 pretty much stated that the Most High said that thou should not plant thee a grove. So what exactly is a grove? Well, a grove is simply defined as small woods, orchard, or a group of trees. Now a grove was considered to be a high place for worship, where people would worship and erect the Canaanite god Baal and goddess Asherah. The Canaanites did not originally worship in a temple. They worshiped outside in the woods or a forest, which was called a grove. The most famous grove today is called the Bohemian Grove, where Alex Jones exposed many of the Hollywood elite and politicians worshiping Moloch, also known as Baal. Our story begins in Northern California over a hundred years ago when locals began to spread rumors of bizarre occult rituals being conducted in the ancient redwood groves of Sonoma County. As the decades passed, it became clear these incredible stories had a basis in truth, and their source was a 2,700-acre private club known as the Bohemian Grove. In the weeks that followed, Alex streamed his footage on his website and released it as a sell-through video. Everywhere I looked, the internet was aflame with news of the daring raid. As the news spread across the planet that the Bohemian Grove had been blown wide open and that their secrets were public, the people were amazed. They were amazed to learn that many U.S. presidents and British prime ministers, German chancellors, the Hollywood elite, the heads of business and academia, Federal Reserve chairmen, were traveling to the Grove each year and that presidents had been going there since the turn of the last century in 1900. They were shocked by each new revelation of ritualistic depravity. This film is about what we've learned in the five years since we infiltrated the Grove. All of that changed on July 15th, 2000 when we ripped aside the veil of secrecy and were successfully able to penetrate the Bohemian Grove on their high holy day and videotape the cremation of care ritual. Remember, Hollywood received its name from the Holly Tree, which was a sacred tree where the witches created their wands, which was in a grove. Today, this form of worship was marked as paganism. Another notable group of people known for worshiping in the woods would be a people known as the Celts. The Celtic religion, called Druidism, was closely tied to their natural world and they worshiped their gods in sacred places like lakes, rivers, cliffs, and bushes. From winter's birth, from across the provinces, they joined together on the hill where Druids first stood. We listened to Nashanachi, our storyteller, who told us the tales of the sacred place we were standing upon. The stories tell us that on All Hallows Night, the priests, the augurs, and the druids came to this hill to light their sacred fires and offer sacrifices to their pagan god. First, we honored the land we stood on, then the tribes that had gathered. We heeded the warnings given to us by Nashanachi. One should never eat the fruits of the hawthorn tree after Samhain night. For it is said that the puka, the shapeshifter, <laughs> bits on them a 
and turns them black. Tis a mischievous one, that puka. The moon, the sun, and the stars were especially important. They would dance naked, frolicking underneath the moonlight. Tell me, kid. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? That of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. Oh, oh, oh I love purple. Excuse me. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Now, while many worshippers of Baal still to this day go to the forest for worship, however, the Canaanites wanted to keep their worship of Baal or Moloch a secret. So they now keep their clothes on and simply move the trees inside. Now, how was this possible? The Baal Pillar, of course. As you see, with the temples of Baalbek to Petra are surrounded by pillars or groves. And this architectural design of Baalbek and Petra became the prototype for all of their buildings, even their homes and many of their most famous architectural sites, such as the Leading Tower of Pisa or the Eiffel Tower. They are actually pillars. The Colosseum was a site for human sacrifice filled with death daily that was given and received in the name of Baal. The Roman Catholic Church is the Church of Baal, if you look at the pillars that surround the temple. There's a new video this morning that some say may be proof we're not alone in the universe. A UFO in the form of a bright light is seen descending over the dome of the rock in Jerusalem. The video is said to be taken over the weekend, uh, then suddenly the light shoots up into the sky. There you see it. Another video from a different angle uh, appears to show the light doing the same thing. All of these buildings are temples and show the highest form of devotion and worship to their god Baal. The worship of Baal would not be complete without a thanksgiving, and a thanksgiving would not be complete without a sacrifice. You know, it's no surprise that the Temple of Baal resembles the architectural designs of all the known courthouses in America to China and Russia and all throughout Europe. Because these are the Canaanites, and on the steps of these courthouses, our ancestors were hung and sold for all to see in the name of Baal. These acts were ritualistic killings and murders. When you examine the lynchings of our ancestors, they were all done on trees in a so-called grove. It was happening so much their bodies were labeled as strange fruit. Even Christ, our Messiah, was hung on a tree, as it was written in Acts 5.30. The God of our Father raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hung on a tree. However, this form of ritualistic killings were running rampant after slavery. One case in particular was the peculiar case of Lee Walker. They always begin with a young black man who was accused of doing something inappropriate to a Caucasian woman. So on July 22, 1893, it was reported that Lee Walker, a young African-American man, was accused of raping a Caucasian woman. The mob dragged Walker from his cell, beating him, stabbing him and stripping him of his clothing. They took Walker North on Front Street to an alley between Sycamore and Mill Street where they hanged him from a telegraph pole. Once Walker was dead, many spectators left but some mob members cut the body down, burned it and mutilated it for souvenirs. As a final insult to decency and to the law, the mob members left the remains of Walker's body at the courthouse. Now let's take a look at this esoterically. A sacrifice is first killed, burnt, and then offered up. Well, Lee was first beaten, stabbed, then he was hung, in this case, on a telegraph pole. Now there is something called a Asherah pole. Now Asherah was the goddess of the Canaanites. 
So then Lee's body was then cut down and then burnt, then mutilated for quote unquote souvenirs. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a burnt sacrifice. Walker's body was dragged to the courthouse or temple for this ritualistic murder to be counted as a human sacrifice to their god, Baal. And the sacrifices today continues, ladies and gentlemen, in many different ways this very day. I would like to thank those who have made it to the end of this video. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. Please tune in to part four when we decode the Hittites. Thanks again for watching. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. This is Neftali signing out.